The startup's job is to be creative and to figure out where the market's gonna go and then try it, ask questions, develop a pitch deck. The reason Elon Musk is so good because he's one hell of a marketing guy. He knows how to present and get your attention. Tesla is there, it's probably the dominant actor, Uber is gonna be the dominant actor. There is some other companies like General Motors have made acquisitions. I mean, is the game over or is there space for startups to penetrate the space? What do you think? No, I mean, there's space for startups. I mean, this is just the beginning. And the thing is, if we, you know, the, the challenge with startups, if you take a, a half, half glasses, half empty approach, you're never going to try anything. You know, you got to understand you can't come into a game thinking you're going to lose. You got to be smart about it. You got to do your customer development. But guess what? You, you know, there's five levels that are going to take place within autonomous vehicles. Four of those levels with intervention being the fourth level is going to happen over the next 10 years. We're just the beginning. We're just at the warning stage, right? And people are taking it to the extreme by jumping in the backseat of a Tesla and let them drive it down the street. We're not at that stage yet, but guess what? You know, our lives, again, think about how much faster the vehicles will be able to go, how much more precise we won't be driving anymore. We'll be doing other things and we'll be assisted. This is just a driverless car is an assistant again. So in terms of the, uh, where are we? We're just at the beginning. It's not, I mean, we're in the stone ages now. The wheels just been, we just figured out the wheels work. Imagine that. So we're primitive, wheels work. Where can we put these wheels? It's not just on an ox cart, right? We got to figure out what vehicles we can use, how we're going to use it, how we can make the outside of those wheels better with rubber and bearings and some ceramic bearings. How do we make it better? And so our job, the startup's job, is to be creative and to figure out where the market's going to go. Listen to people like Forrester Group, Gardner Group, Aberdeen Group, and get a uh, they don't know everything, but they can give you a, at least some guidance to where the market's going. And then try it. Ask questions. Develop a pitch deck. Go to a event. Talk to Magnus Steyer, one of the top contract manufacturers. What do you think? Go to their innovation labs out in California. Most of them have innovation labs. Meet with them. Most of them are open to meeting. You say, hey, listen, I have an idea. What do you think? You got to get out. Again, you know, get out the door and ask questions. You got to be passionate about what you have. You know, you talk about Elon Musk versus Google. The reason Elon Musk is so good because he's one hell of a marketing guy. He knows how to present and get your attention. Look at all the trucks people bought. They got deposits on trucks. They don't even know if they're going to work, but they got the trucks. They're passionate. Be passionate. Believe in the thing. If you sit down, oh, I don't know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, what do I do? Elon Musk doesn't say that. He said, I got the best damn truck in the world. I mean, think about it, it's unbelievable. He got, what, 157,000 orders in a couple of days? And a truck that doesn't even exist. And part of it, we forget how important marketing is, but also the part, important part of marketing because it brings people together. They wanna have hope, they wanna believe, and they wanna have a dream. And that's what Elon Musk has given to him. They believe that he can go to the moon, he can go to Mars, he can explore the universe. Think about it. PayPal, Tesla, solar panels. I mean, it's it's amazing. So get out and you know talk about it passionately what you have and meet with the people. This is not rocket science. This is one-on-one. So get out the door, talk about it, be passionate and also understand if you don't have the capability. So there's a lot of really good technologies, a lot, but they're just not marketing, sales, business development or operations. That's why they look for guys like me, like David Yang did to come in and jumpstart the company. And you know how Ava's done, right? In a very short period of time, that's how they do it. And there's a lot of other guys like me. I'm not the only guy in the world. But where we focus now with uh, our company, GSD, is to get, bring our talent in, be passionate about it, 
We write about it, we talk about it, we speak about it, we know how to get the investors for it, and we also know some of the directions to the market. And what we don't know, we ask the questions, and anybody can do it. What are the biggest mistakes that, that usually are made? Yeah, I mean, the one thing is they build, a, they build a tool, they build a service, they build a solution, and they never get any feedback on it because they're the smartest people in the world building the best solution and people are gonna to wanna to buy it because it's just the best. So they build it in a vacuum and nobody wants it, right? So they build this stuff and they think it's the best. They're talking to their friends about it. Everybody around them is convinced it's the best, right? They're drinking their own Kool-Aid. Get out. So that's door number one. Don't believe that you're the smartest building something without testing it. Like I said, the customer development. Make sure the people want it. Don't build in a vacuum. The other thing is people hire way too early. They bring sales, marketing, business development in before they need them. And they overburden their company and they reduce their runway. Keep your expenses down, 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 down. Till you figure out where the hell the company's gone so you can raise the money, you know? Treat the money like it's, you know, it's in your pocket in a positive sense. And, you know, every nickel, every penny that comes out for the company, be tight with it. You know, one penny should get you two. One dollar forget you two. And if you do that, you win. So two is they bring people in too early. Then the end, they spend way too much money on really kooky stuff. They buy expensive furniture, nice office space, you know, uh, they start to overburden their cash flow. Don't do that. Get yourself a virtual office, get set up, make sure the stuff is right. Don't come up with a lot of expenses. Take that money and put it in sales and marketing now that you have the product market fit. Go out. Do it where you can make money, not where you spend money.